Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to TechSoup. Uh, this is our new member orientation and questions and answers. So we hope you come with questions and we hope we have the answers for you. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I'm going to show you in the next slide how you can engage um, if this is your first time on one of our webinars. Um, you are on mute. If you have a question, we would love for you to type it in the Q&A. We have some other team members that will answer your questions. We will be sending the replay along with these slides. It has some hyperlinks on there so you can click on there and learn more about TechSoup. If you need the closed caption, go ahead and tap on the CC button in your Zoom menu and you'll be able to um, use the closed caption. I'm going to turn this over to the senior director here, Nick Finn, and he's going to take it over. Have a great webinar, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. And um, thank you always, Aretha, for getting this set up and kicked off today. Aretha and I have been doing these webinars together for a few years now um, and always appreciate her great energy and enthusiasm around all things TechSoup and uh, bringing folks into the fold and learning more about what it is we do at TechSoup here and how we can help you. Um, my name is Nick Finn. I'm a senior director here at TechSoup. Um, and today's session is a new member orientation with some question and answer set, um, time, uh, both at the end and then uh, frankly during the presentation as well. Um, and uh, today we are welcoming folks who are new to TechSoup or have not participated in this webinar before to introduce you to how TechSoup can help your nonprofit. Um, and with that, let's get going. And we're going to start with some key terms or buzzwords that you may hear in nonprofit tech circles. And I just want to set the stage for us so that we all agree on what these basic terms mean. Digital transformation is the process of becoming a more tech forward nonprofit who might lean into using technology as a way to serve the people who are at the center of your mission. Digital resilience is the notion that technology can help you overcome common challenges. And a, a great example of that is when you use um, digital technology for your finances and bookkeeping. It makes it much easier to track uh, expenditures, incoming cash flow, to report out on things you need to report out. Um, it's just far superior than doing any of that in paper and pencil ways. And, and yet during the pandemic, we learned that still there are thousands of nonprofits out there that rely on paper and pencil still to uh, manage their books. And so digital resilience is about how digital technology can really help you do a much better job of that across all areas of your nonprofit. Civil society is a term that you will hear about um, from TechSoup quite a bit. It's the way that we and many others describe the broad group of organizations that aren't the government and they aren't business. Instead, they are the people like you and I working in nonprofits and non-governmental organizations around the world, working to make the world a better place, addressing all sorts of issues. Big ones include climate change, civil rights, um, healthcare, things like this where we're making an effort to help people and change people's lives for the better. And then finally, for sure by now, you'll have heard the phrase cloud adoption when it comes to nonprofits and technology. And, and really cloud adoption is honestly nothing more complex than using modern cloud-based technologies versus older technologies that you might load directly onto a computer and that at a certain period of time sort of become out of sync with the rest of the world require updates and at some point, honestly, just are not usable and you have to update to a new version of it. But cloud-based platforms are different in the sense that you get an ongoing constant stream of updates to keep that platform up to date, integrated with other platforms and communicating openly. So cloud adoption, right? So let's go to some of the core questions that folks probably have. What is TechSoup? You've joined us. Let's learn more about what it is exactly that we do and how we can help you. So first of all, in the United States, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And we are also part and convener of a global network of NGOs around the world, um, all dedicated to this common notion that technology can be extremely powerful and helpful to nonprofits. Um, 
but important to call out right at the front of this that like you on this call, we are also a 501c3, right? We are in this for a lot of good reasons, um, but they are nonprofit reasons. And in our daily work, we put the interests and desires of nonprofits at the very center of what we do because we are one ourselves. Secondly, our mission is really to support nonprofits like you, and as I said, around the world, as you work with technology, with a goal of building a more equitable planet. TechSoup isn't just in this to get technology out there. We also believe that that technology needs to be put to good work. And so for us, the notion of building a more equitable planet um, is sort of the core idea behind why we think technology is important and helpful to NGOs because we're all striving for that objective at the end of the day. Um, in a very practical sense, one of the things that TechSoup does that is most helpful is we host a catalog of affordable technology products um, available to nonprofits in the United States and, and around the world as well. And uh, we know that the cost of technology can often be a blocker and make it very difficult for nonprofits to be able to afford all the things and all the tools that they might want. Um, and so part of what we've done over time is built an online catalog on our site, techsoup.org, that has offers from all sorts of different technology partners. And we've negotiated with them to bring to nonprofits the best price that we can um, to at least help stretch your budget a little bit further um, and uh, enable you to bring in the tools that you need to work with, um, but perhaps not paying the market rate that you would see um, out on the public internet for a for-profit entity. These nonprofit rates that we negotiate are helpful. Um, alongside these technology products, TechSoup has also come to understand, of course, through our years of work with the sector, that it's not really enough <clears throat> for nonprofits to get a new tool or a new piece of technology. Often, that's the beginning of a longer process of uh, installing and uh, managing those technology tools, training staff to use them properly, understanding where the pitfalls might be and what management steps you need to take. And over time, we've developed a suite of services that we also provide to nonprofits to help manage, implement, and troubleshoot the technology platforms that you're using. Um, these services aren't free. They do cost a little bit of money. Um, but again, we have a very concerted effort to make sure that things are affordable for the nonprofit sector. Um, and so we try to price these services appropriately. We also are extremely focused on education as a core value. Um, one of the big ways that TechSoup as a nonprofit is different than the for-profit world is we provide 501c3s and NGOs around the world with education and training on how to use technology platforms um, and how to increase your own staff's digital awareness and ability to work with technology tools um, and we do this in a variety of different ways on the blog. We have a whole courses platform that I'll talk about more in a little while, webinars like the one we're doing today, and all sorts of other specialized ways that we provide learning and educational resources to the nonprofit sector. It's a core part of what we do and very important to keeping nonprofits aware and able to use the technology that we provide. And then finally, TechSoup, like you, also engages in grant-based programming, meaning that we accept funding from outside sources to pursue a particular objective. Um, and most of our grant-based program, uh, programming is, of course, linked very directly to how technology can be a tool um, to help build social good. Um, and so TechSoup has its own social mission, again, at the core of what we do um, to strengthen, strengthen global civil society and to really work toward that ideal of a more equitable planet that I mentioned at the beginning. So already, as you can see, TechSoup is a lot of different things. Um, you know, there's this notion in communications, I'm sure many of you on this call have run into it, 
where you're trying to explain to somebody what does your nonprofit do exactly and uh, you know we often describe that as the elevator pitch um, and the truth is at TechSoup, we say when we've got an elevator pitch that we better have a long elevator ride because there's a lot of things that TechSoup does. Um, and uh, it's important to know that there's a real diversity to our mission. So let's go into some detail here about what some of this means for you and how it can be more practically and specifically helpful to you. And, and to start with, I'm gonna talk about the TechSoup catalog. Um, and again, as I said, this webinar is really today designed mostly for the United States audience. We may have some folks abroad on this webinar and, and you're welcome, please, to sit in and learn more. But I'm gonna be talking specifically about the US website and how that works for folks in the United States. So here on the screen is a screenshot I'm sharing of the homepage of TechSoup, right? Uh, and really what I wanna do is call out for you how the navigation works so you can find the different things here that would be of interest to you. The product catalog that I spoke about is accessible from the home page in two specific ways. You can go up here, obviously, to the navigation bar at the top of the page, or there's this big orange button right here in the middle of the page. We do try to make it as easy as we can for you to find the product catalog. Um, I've linked this image in the deck to a live link of the TechSuit.org homepage and website. I'm going to click on that now, and we're going to launch that and you'll be able to see in real time how this works as I walk us through some steps. Um, and before I go into that, I wanna call out specifically for folks that if you didn't already know, today is day two of something that we do um, a few times each year, which is called the GrantStation promotion. Um, GrantStation is an online database of organizations providing grant funding to nonprofits, right? Across all sorts of different mission areas. And in particular, um, they are providing grants to nonprofits that are unsolicited, meaning that they are not reaching out to you first and asking you to apply for it. You are welcome to simply go through their database, find matches and submit grant proposals, right? In a lot of cases, granting agencies won't uh, accept an unsolicited proposal, but GrantStation very specifically um, is providing access to grant funding opportunities that are accepting unsolicited um, proposals. If you go to the TechSoup site today, you can click on this big header image here where it talks about GrantStation. This will be live until 5 p.m. today, Pacific time. The, uh, the offer is a full year subscription to GrantStation for $99. Um, that's much, uh, much less money than it's available on the open internet. Um, it's full price is as much as $699. So you're really saving quite a bit of money. Um, but uh, it's great that we have this webinar today. I really do want to call out to you that that grant station offer is something that a lot of nonprofits do take advantage of. In any case, going more deeply into the product catalog now, um, by clicking on this button up here, we can actually drill right on through to all the different offers available in the product catalog. And I'm just gonna briefly scroll up so we can see some of the brands that we're talking about. Microsoft is a key brand. Adobe is a key brand. Um, Norton is a key brand. Um, we have hardware opportunities and offers through the TechSoup catalog. Um, and then a variety of services as well paralleling what I've said a little bit earlier. So from this page in the catalog, you can click around, find different offers that might be of interest to your nonprofit. You can also search by category. I think we're past 20 different categories now. Um, and so for instance, perhaps you're interested in website management for your nonprofit, just click on the category that will take us into a series of different offers available through TechSoup that might be helpful for your website. You know, for instance, we, we now provide a service to help you get your domain name registered. So if your nonprofit does not yet have a domain and a website at that domain, we can help you accomplish that. Um, we have DIY opportunities for building your own website with Wix. Um, or if you go further down on the page, you can 
click here, see all web development options, and you can learn more about some of the offers, particularly through TechSoup itself on your website. We do a wellness assessment, we do consultations, um, and we do have larger packages for larger nonprofits who need help getting their website up and running. We often find that interest in website services specifically is one of the most common reasons nonprofits come to us because frankly, one of the biggest ways technology functions in the nonprofit sector is as a communications tool and your website is one of the main pieces of that. So that's a very common use case for nonprofits who come to TechSoup. Um, in any case, going back to these categories, as you can see, there's a number of other different categories on here that might be of interest to you um, and your nonprofit. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, I'm going to close the live view of the site now. We're going to go back <clears throat> just to the static slides here. Um, so cover some of the specific offers around Microsoft. Um, in particular, Microsoft 365 and Office 365 are two of the biggest things that nonprofits come to TechSoup for now in terms of Microsoft products. And these are the cloud-based versions of Microsoft Office, which I'm sure you know well. It has Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all those standard uh, programs that lots of folks are used to seeing from Microsoft. Uh, we also have access, of course, to the Windows Pro full operating system, which in short term means you, know, you can update to Windows 11. Working through TechSoup, you can either update or do a fresh install. Much more to learn about the Microsoft offers in the TechSoup catalog. I mentioned Adobe in particular. Um, we have individual memberships to Creative Cloud. If you work in communications for nonprofits, you know Adobe Creative Cloud is one of the central packages of graphic design, web design, and print design uh, software that you really would be working with. Acrobat Pro is another very popular Adobe offer. Um, it's how you manage PDFs, PDFs, portable document format. We all use them. Adobe invented them. Uh, this is a great piece of software to manage those. Um, and then one of the newest and most exciting elements of the Adobe catalog for TechSoup is called Adobe Express. Um, it's a new offer currently available to nonprofits for a $0 admin fee. Um, and uh, it is what I would call perhaps a slightly more user-friendly version of Creative Cloud, meaning that you don't have to have as much technical training as you would to use Creative Cloud. Um, Adobe Express lets you do all sorts of things from print to video, et cetera. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that if that would be helpful to your nonprofit. Intuit QuickBooks is another brand and product line that we find nonprofits come to us for a lot. As I mentioned earlier, managing your finances and accounting with paper and pencil just isn't an option in the modern world. You have to have digital tools for that. QuickBooks is one of the stalwarts of that area. Thousands of nonprofits use QuickBooks across the country every day to manage their books, and it's available through TechSoup. Um, you'll get a live, ver you'll get a version of this deck, by the way, at the end of the presentation, um, and uh, it does contain live links. If you wanted to learn about QuickBooks in particular, you can look at this online FAQ. That link is live. You would be able to learn more about how you could get that. Um, there are a lot of other brands obviously available in our catalog. I can't go over all of them today, um, but you'll recognize these corporate logos themselves. I um, encourage you to take a look at the catalog and find the things that would be most helpful to your nonprofit. During the pandemic, one of the things that we also uh, saw very clearly is that um, TechSoup's ability to provide nonprofits with access to hardware products is also extremely important. Um, TechSoup has an entire section in the product catalog devoted specifically to hardware. You have to go into the product catalog before you can see this link on the left to the hardware section. Um, and again, this hardware is provided uh, as a discounted rate in a way to help nonprofits save money on perhaps what you would see as the public market on some of these items. Um, we have the hardware catalog that you can look through yourself. Um, I want to call out three specific brands that we do have great relationships with, Dell, Lenovo, and HP. All provide breaks in pricing to nonprofits through TechSoup. And uh, we also have a really interesting line of refurbished hardware 
Um, and uh, this is a great moment to pause a little bit and emphasize TechSoup's social mission again. Years ago, it was clear to TechSoup staff that it was incredibly wasteful and very environmentally unfriendly to just be constantly throwing out hardware that might be three or four years out of date. Um, and that in fact, much of this hardware was still completely usable. Um, and so it was logical to think through the opportunity to maybe repurpose this hardware um, and make sure that it has a good second life at a nonprofit that we can use it. So we work with refurbishers across the country to do exactly that. This hardware obviously may be a couple of years older than the brand new things you might get at like Best Buy or something like that. Um, but it's completely usable um, and does not cost as much money. Um, and for many nonprofits, totally meets their need to have hardware like a desktop or laptop on somebody's desk that they can use. Um, and uh, so I encourage you to take a look at the refurbished hardware opportunities. Um, it's great from TechSoup's perspective to see that now we are not the only ones working in the refurbished hardware area. Lots of for-profit companies are looking at that and doing that work as well. But we were one of the first to really um, pioneer that kind of thinking around refurbishing and technology. Now, as I mentioned before, it's not enough just to have technology, software, and hardware products for your nonprofit to use. Even if you can get great pricing through TechSoup, there are additional challenges to think about. And so over the years, TechSoup has started building out service lines to help nonprofits adopt, manage, and troubleshoot the technology platform, hardware, and software that they might be using whether or not they got it from TechSoup or somewhere else entirely. So I wanna talk about that briefly. Let's start with where do you find these services? They are of course in that top navigation. Um, and uh, let's go into a little bit of detail about what some of these services are. So we have a help desk service designed to help nonprofits with like a specific thing. Maybe you've got a scanner or a printer or something that just like really gives you lots of trouble we can set up like a year long uh, relationship with you for that specific item, help you troubleshoot it, get it working when it's not working properly. Um, we have a much broader offer called Managed IT where instead of just help desk on one thing, Managed IT is a much broader comprehensive um, consulting relationship between TechSoup and you, um, helping you manage your technology stack um, in many cases, lots of nonprofits already have very overworked staff who may not be technology experts and need help managing the technology stack of the nonprofit. Our managed IT product can be a great solution to that. As I mentioned earlier, we have a new domain registration service where we can help nonprofits actually establish the domain at which their website might live. Um, it's not hard, but if you don't know technically how to do it, and you need help, you could spend some time Googling that and teaching yourself. You could also work directly with TechSoup and we can help you. Office 365 email and data migration is another common service that we provide to nonprofits. Um, and in fact, as my colleague Kevin Mulhall is gonna go into shortly, um, the configuration of Microsoft products in particular can be complex and challenging sometimes. And so if, for instance, your nonprofit perhaps is moving to Microsoft Cloud um, and you're just finding that the technical steps to do that are just outside of your comfort level, TechSoup does provide a service, in fact, several different services to help nonprofits with that Microsoft 365 adoption. Um, and uh, that includes, in some cases, email and data migration service. Um, definitely worth talking to us about those things if you're struggling with them. Um, if you're using an older version of Microsoft Office, we do still provide some installation support for those older versions. Um, and I also want to call out our digital assessment tool, um, which is a grant-based program that TechSoup worked on to build out a framework that nonprofits can go through. The digital assessment tool lets you essentially judge some of the different parts of your nonprofit and understand how well your digital adoption is going in each of those areas. So you might think about communications or your finance structure, um, or there are numerous different 
areas to think about the technology your nonprofit is using and the digital assessment tool can really help you understand where you might have room to grow or maybe where you're doing a great job already. As I said before, one of the most common things nonprofits are coming to TechSoup these days for is help on the website. Um, and I'm sure uh, probably everybody on this call has something that they wish was happening differently <laughs> with their website. Maybe it should be easier to update. Maybe it loads extremely slowly. Maybe you know there are really glaring security holes in your website, which is a huge issue. And please don't ignore that if that's happening to your website. Um, we don't like to engage in like the strange, scary tactics that some computer security consultants will engage in. But I will tell you that like every year since I have worked at TechSoup, <clears throat> there has been some major story in the media uh, about a ransomware attack here and there. And it happens frequently now. Um, and it's not to say that everyone on this call should be scared of getting hit with a ransomware attack today. But if you know that your website is already vulnerable to that kind of thing, don't ignore it. Please take steps to get the security content, to get the security on your site, you know, up to date and where it should be. Um, TechSoup provides website consultation and development for nonprofits. We can help you look at what you've got right now. We can help you dream about what you might want to get. We can get down to the nuts and bolts and nitty gritty of what it would cost to do something close to what you think you need. Um, we can also help you with the outbound communications technology that you might use, nonprofit digital marketing services, sort of what we're doing today in this call with you, um, are a very common thing we get outreach from nonprofits on. Think about how email itself is such an important component of how your nonprofit can speak to the users who come there, to your own staff, frankly, and maybe to external public audiences about the work that you do. Many nonprofits try to use something called the Google, the Google Ad Grant, um, which at its best form is a $10,000 monthly grant nonprofits can leverage for search terms related to their mission. There's some limits around how you can do that, and nonprofits often struggle with using the entire $10,000 that's available to them through Google. Um, but we do provide support for nonprofits trying to work with the Google Ad Grant service. So if that's you, I encourage you to get in touch with us about that. Um, and uh, well, this is outdated now because we've been through that. But if your nonprofit has needed to make the change from universal from Google's Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4, that's a change that happened earlier this summer. If you need help doing that and you haven't done it yet, reach out and talk to us about it. Um, if you haven't done the migration to GA4 on your site, you're already losing data because Universal Analytics is no longer collecting that data. So make sure that you have that piece updated if you really do need to do it. Right, so those services, as I said, are available in this drop-down menu. Um, in particular, I also want to focus on the educational service that we provide through TechSoup Courses. TechSoup Courses is our custom-built set of educational opportunities from 100 to 300 level courses designed specifically for nonprofits, and they cover a wide range of different areas. Um, lots of the topics I've already discussed in this webinar are included in these courses. Um, here's what the TechSoup courses website looks like. And I do have to call out that it's a separate website from TechSoup.org. So you see the URL, it's TechSoup.course.tc, right? Um, this is available to anybody to use. Um, whereas the products and hardware on TechSoup.org are limited to nonprofits who have gone through the qualification process with TechSoup, courses here are available to anybody. They're designed specifically for nonprofit staff, but all you would need to do is sign up on this website and you'd be able to use it. Um, going back to the deck, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to click on that again. Um, We've had over 70,000 learners use these courses so far. So obviously they do have traction. As I said, they're already designed specifically for nonprofit staff. Anybody can sign up. 
The topics cover things like Excel, managing data, customer relationship management, cybersecurity, much more than that. Uh, and in particular, I want to call out the Microsoft Digital Skills Center, which is part of our courses platform. These are courses we've developed over time, specifically with Microsoft, to help address skill building in the nonprofit sector around Microsoft products in particular. Since they're so common within the sector, that Digital Skills Center is a great resource to know about, right? Um, one of the things we've done in this courses platform is taken lots of different types of courses and strung them together in what we call tracks. Um, and here's an example of that. This is the nonprofit foundational skills track. And as you can see from the list of items on the screen, it covers several different topics, um, but you could sign up for this and run through several different things that you're gonna need to learn about tech and nonprofits come out on the other side, perhaps knowing what the next steps are that you need to take for your nonprofit and to ensure its digital resilience, right? So that is my quick overview of the TechSoup site and the initial view of what the things are that we can do to help you. Um, now I wanna bring up two of my colleagues here at TechSoup, Kelly Garrett and Kevin Mulhall who are gonna talk about different ways to engage with TechSoup to get the help you need. And I, and I wanna set a really clear difference between what they do. So Kelly is an associate manager with the account management group, right? AMG, as we call it here at TechSoup. AMG is here to help you manage your TechSoup account, right? So if you're having trouble logging into your TechSoup account, or you have questions about your eligibility, or you have something that just doesn't quite fit, that's not specific to like a Microsoft product or an Adobe product, but you need help with your TechSoup account, that's what Kelly's team can help with. And then Kevin, who will come up after Kelly, um, will help you with more product specific stuff, especially around Microsoft. But I'm gonna stop right there and hand it over to Kelly Garrett. Nice to see you again today, Kelly. Thanks for being here. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good Wednesday and are uh, enjoying the presentation so far. Um, I do want to say this because I've seen it asked in the QA a couple times. This is recorded. You will get an email with the recording the slides. And then we also have underneath the resource tab, uh, drop down menu at the top of our website, we do have a community uh, presentation web uh, archive. So if you miss this or you want to come back to it, or you can't find that email, it's on the website as well for you and your colleagues to access. Perfect. Okie dokie. So moving on, um, I am the account management uh Groups manager. Um, we are one group within our client services department. Um, if you give us a call, if you chat with us on techsoup.org, you are talking to our team, uh, probably somebody um, that reports to me. Um, and we are here to help. Um, and so I wanted to go over a couple of things that we have common questions about um, and we hear from members. So first things first is um, Nick's shown you guys how to navigate the website. But what do you do when you um, finally find a product that you're interested in? So product or service will be listed in our product catalog. Um, you see it, you click on it, and this is what we call an offer page or the product page pops up. And it has pretty much all the information you should need to make a uh, decision on if you want to request the product or not. Um, something to keep in mind is that there's a pretty strict no refunds or exchanges policy for all of the nonprofit programs. There's a couple that might have a little leniency. Um, Microsoft, for example, has like a 30 day window to request a refund if you haven't activated the product, but most products and services are non-refundable, not exchangeable. So you do want to keep um, in mind that, uh, you want to make sure that you're absolutely certain you want something before you check out with it. It's going to work for your org. You don't want to just uh, buy something, check out, and then all of a sudden realize, oh, it was for Macs and you needed a PC version or, or something along those lines. So there's always going to be three tabs of information on every product page here. You see that's um, highlighted here in the box, the red box. Um, each tab, we usually have description on the left and rules, eligibility, and restrictions on the right. The middle tab name can change, but all three you should click on and read through thoroughly before you check out with the product. Um, 
Some products you'll notice will say access to discounted rates in the name. Those products are ones that you're paying TechSoup an admin fee. You're going to get an email with a coupon code or a link to a special catalog. And then you're going to pay the partner directly. Um, Zoom is an example of that. If anyone's ever gotten Zoom, Zoom is an access to a discounted rate product. Um, you pay TechSoup a small admin fee. You then go to Zoom and pay them up 50% for their subscription. Um, you then have products like QuickBooks Online Plus here or GrantStation, which is a one-time fee for a subscription. Um, and then you can come back to TechSoup every year to renew that subscription. And all that information would be here on this product page and you would click through it. Um, and this is probably QuickBooks Online's a very popular product. So I always like to show off this one. So here it will have the description, um, subscription details in the middle will go over how you're going to renew each year. It's also got, you know, sometimes some products have existing subscriber restrictions. So if you've already got a QuickBooks Online Plus account, you're not going to be able to apply this discount to your commercial full price account. You're going to have to create a new one and transfer your data over. So important information like that is something you want to make sure you're prepared for and you're reading everything. Um, when you do find something, if you've got questions or something's not being answered, you're more than welcome um, to uh, reach out to TechSoup. I do recommend before you uh, reach out to us um, for support is checking out TechSoup support. It's our recently updated FAQ page. and You can access it by clicking the help um, button next to where you log in, or if you are logged in, it'd be next to the circle with the person icon. Um, and in there, we've made a very robust FAQ. We're constantly updating it, um, adding things to it. So I highly recommend um, going in and seeing if you can quickly find an answer there. Always best to self-serve if you can, just so you're not wasting your time sitting on the phone. Um, but we are there for you if there's something that's not answered on the product page or TechSoup support. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. So in that TechSoup support, there is a search bar that's pretty accurate that you can look through. You can also uh, click through our topics. There's promoted articles if you scroll down that page. Um, really great idea to click through here. Um, and if you're new, you know, checking out, you know, account access and management. It's really important to make sure you're keeping your account information up to date. Um, and making sure that you've got the right email addresses listed. You know, your login email is one thing, and that's how one way we communicate with you when you log in. You also have a separate organization email that's not a login. It's purely a contact for the organization that we send billing notifications to. Um, we send uh, fulfillment emails with all of your fulfillment information, all that good stuff. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, that we have answers that how do I change that? What's the difference between those emails? Um, why is it telling me I'm not eligible for something? Um, you know, every single part uh, partner has set their own eligibility requirements for their nonprofit programs. So being um, qualified or validated for TechSoup doesn't mean you're going to be able to check out with everything. Um, you know, you, there is going to be some restrictions based on location, um, based on budget, based on your organization type, which is um, reflects your mission and your activities. Um, things along those lines. So great place to come and get some helpful information. We also have information about like Norton in here and Microsoft. We are trying to develop it a bit more to have more of our um, program FAQs in there as well. Um, so definitely highly recommend going in and checking it out. Again, you just click that help button at any point in the header of techsoup.org. Um, and this will help you get going. And just a reminder that techsoup.org is for the is TechSoup United States. It is geared for United States-based organi organizations. Only United States organizations can get qualified on this website, check out with products, and only they can use those products. Um, they can't send them overseas to other organizations. Um, you do have to go through your own partner. Um, so just keeping that in mind, if you're not based in the United States, going through this FAQ might not be the most helpful because it's specific to this website and specific to United States offers. You probably want to go to um, the TechSoup partner in your country and look at their website for information. Um, perfect. Uh, next slide, please. 
So if you do need support, and again, this is for contacting TechSoup US's client services, we support US-based organizations, um, you would click on contact us there. Um, and that is pretty much on every single page of TechSoup.org. If you just scroll all the way to the bottom, these menus are pretty much always displayed. So you can always get access to them. It's also where you'll see our about us's, um, volunteer, career, refunds, returns policy. You can subscribe to the newsletter, all that good stuff is at the bottom. But contact Contact us is what you want to click to get in touch with client services. Next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so we do have a couple options of getting in touch with us for live support. Um, we are available uh, Monday through Friday, um, unless there's like a three-day holiday, like we just had Labor Day. We were closed that Monday. Um, but we have live chat, which you can access in the bottom right corner when you click on, oh, please go back, please. Perfect. Um, so in the bottom right corner there, you'll see the help button. If you click on that, that will pop up and it will um, allow you if live chat is open, it will have a live chat um, option in that help bubble. Um, but it's it basically encouraging you to, hey, maybe check out some of the FAQ things, see if you can find an answer. But if not, live chat's there for you. Um, we do try to be as respond as quickly responsive as we can be, but as a nonprofit ourselves, we ask everybody to be patient. You know, sometimes we have our own limited uh, small team situation going on, and it is a real person you are speaking to on the phone or on chat. Um, it is we don't use AI. There is no AI function. Just something that maybe notifies you about, like, hey, make sure you have your EIN tax ID handy and your organization name ready for when we ask for that information, but you will be speaking to a live person, not an AI bot or anything like that. And then, as I said, same goes for the phones. Um, the phones, uh, you are speaking to a person. Again, we try to, you know, answer calls as quickly as we can, but, you know, some days are busier than others. Like yesterday and today, we're very busy because the grant station promotion's going on until 5 p.m. today. Um, so it's something that we're getting a lot of calls. So we always just ask everybody, be patient. We will get to you. We won't hang up on you. We won't close the chat on you. Just hang out there and we will get to you as fast as we can and provide you as thorough of a support as possible. Um, and if you are looking for the grant station promotion, um, you know, the landing page, we did have that. And then uh, Reetha has been pinging into the... Um, into the webinar chat, um, that URL, you might have to copy the whole thing. It doesn't always grab that dash that's at the end of the, of the URL. Perfect. Um, okay. So, uh, contacting client services, as I said, we've got live chat and we have phone support Monday through Thursday. Chat is available from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. We are located in California on the West coast. So we are on Pacific time. Um, and Friday, it's available all day from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, now, <clears throat> if you wanted to speak to someone over the phone, totally cool. We have that available um, Monday through Thursday. It is available from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific. We are not open. Our phones are not open on Fridays. We focus exclusively on chats, making sure we're getting through registrations and things along those lines. Um, something to keep in mind. Um, uh, something to keep in mind for client services is what we can and can't support you with. Um, we are a general customer service team. Um, we have far too many partners to become experts on the products and services. Um, and a lot of times, like if you, for example, like we looked at QuickBooks, if you're going to be looking for, well, how do I set up my records and how do I make this report, do all that kind of product functionality questions, that's something Intuit's going to help you with because everything that's available on the website is going to be the same product on the commercial or retail market. So QuickBooks Online Plus through TechSoup is the exact same software as QuickBooks Online Plus through Intuit. The only difference is you're getting a donated nonprofit rate where it's $75 per year instead of like, I think it's like $55 per month usually. So that's the only difference. So that's something to keep in mind that if you have like in-depth functionality, pro uh, product functionality questions, you need in-depth support, things along those lines, a lot of times, we aren't trained on that product support, and we also don't have access to the partner system. Like we can only see so much or we're only sent so much information. So a lot of times we're going to maybe be directing you to the partner for that kind of support. What we can help you with is your TechSoup account management, eligibility questions, navigating what um, what's on our website, 
help with checking out, things along those lines we can definitely assist you with. But if it's IT support, product support, um, you know, I'm on a partner's website and that website's not working, things along those lines are going to probably have to be directed to the partner that um, owns the website, owns the product, owns the service. But we are definitely here to help you make that determination as needed. But I like to set that expectation that, you know, it might be another call to another team. Um, really quickly before we end this, um, I did see that Aretha mentioned that there is a question in the QA that she'd like me to answer. Um, I believe it's the one from, let me see here. Danielle. You, from Danielle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. from uh, daniel or danielle daniel, daniel sorry daniel. daniel okay we had question about so i see i have a question here it says um i have had issues with purchasing the tech soup version of a software when i'm already subscribed to the software as a service is there a best practice for handle handle uh, for how to handle this challenge you guys should really offer migration as a service for TechSoup products. It's funny you say that. We do offer migration services. Um, for example, the QuickBooks online products um, that you have to migrate your data from your commercial account to your um, nonprofit account uh, to make sure that you receive the right billing. We have a service for that um, and it's underneath the TechSoup services. Uh, so that is one thing we also have. I think Nick kind of went over pointing out that we have the help desk services for like one time issues or things like that. So highly recommend going to the product catalog, um, going to the donor, going down to uh, TechSoup and looking at the services we offer because we do offer quite a few services and we do have some migration specific services like the QuickBooks online. So highly recommend that. And then I would say before requesting a product, I would just make sure you're checking that product page or offer page thoroughly. Usually the middle tab will call out existing subscriber restrictions. It will usually say somewhere so existing subscriber ineligible, existing subscriber eligible. Um. Also, Kevin Mohal just uh, put into the webinar chat um, that there's customer success. Customer success um, provides a little bit more in-depth support than client services. Again, client services is a general customer um, general customer service team. Um, customer success can maybe get a little bit more in-depth with you. Um, so I see that um, Kevin has shared his email a couple times with folks, and he just put a, a calendar link on there too. So again... Thoroughly read the product page. Um, make sure you're checking the existing subscriber um, uh, restrict the ex uh, sorry existing subscriber restrictions, and then also check our services for seeing if there's a specific service that supports what you're looking for, or if there's maybe a generic one like the help desk support for one issue. And that's my uh, best recommendation for that. Or contact client services and see if we have any resources for you. I believe that is all I've got. So I'm going to hand it back over to Nick. Great. Thanks, Kelly, so much. And, um, you know, just briefly, uh, Kevin uh, had dropped some uh, a couple of notes into chat, but I want to ask Kevin to just comment here on the other team that can help you as well, the customer success team, which is more of the product focus piece of TechSoup. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, that was actually a great question to segue uh, into what customer success does. Um, so um, first, I just want to dive into what you kind of see here to just get a general overview, and then I'll tie back into Daniel's question. So the question is, is uh, what is customer success? You've probably heard the term thrown around quite a bit recently, customer success, customer experience. Um, we recognize and understand that there are a lot of challenges that you're presented when requesting products or services from TechSoup. Um, as Kelly mentioned, we have an enormous um, amount of vendor partners. Um, knowing everything about everything is very difficult. I try to do it personally. Our team tries to do it, but there are certain areas where we have a stronger understanding around products than others. But that said, we're there to field those types of questions. So what this means and what this translates into the value-added services that we offer, you have the opportunity to connect with a team that has over 20 years of combined service consulting slash advising uh, nonprofit organizations such as yourself. Again, learn more about the products and services available to nonprofits through strategic advisory engagements. Uh, there have been some questions that had flown in around constant contact and MailChimp. That's something that would definitely be up our alley. We could get into a conversation about that with you, the, the pluses, the minuses, uh, et cetera. 
work with certified technology professional professionals in assessing your IT stack. Uh, I am six times Microsoft certified. Um, we have other team members that also carry certifications, uh, including AWS and GCP, which actually I also have. But um, we understand a, a, a good majority of the core products and services that we offer, at least enough to be able to have an intelligent conversation with you. And as Nick alluded to earlier, to begin the adoption process. Requesting technology is just the beginning. Actually onboarding the solutions is where the real meat and potatoes of everything are. In addition, you can gain valuable insights into the latest practices and principles in the nonprofit space. Uh, in our role, we're in a really unique position that we work with everybody. We work with Nick. We work with Aretha. We work with Kelly. We work with our development team. We work in a manner that allows us the ability to uh, cross-functionally engage with people that have different bits of knowledge about a lot of different things. And that through osmosis, we're able to be able to kind of step in and be able to provide some additional insights on things that were maybe a standard customer success team uh, that focuses just on, say, products and services may not necessarily plug in. And then the, the final bullet here is to discuss uh, requests for proposals, uh, review scopes of work, and develop basic strategies surrounding fundraising. We do not do grant writing. Um, but we, and through thousands of consultations, again, engaging with our development team um, and connecting with experts, um, have developed a pretty strong understanding of, of where funding is going to the degree that um, if you have programs or services uh, that you're looking to launch, um, there's something that we could plug into the conversation as part of a larger um, set of concepts uh, to there. Uh, we reviewed um, hundreds of scopes of work, um, and we've developed uh, quite a few requests for proposals to manage uh, managed service providers, uh, including even those that we work with on our own. Really quickly to the example before, um, the Microsoft is a, is a perfect discussion. That type of migration, whether it workspace, Google Workspace to Microsoft, like you're moving from QuickBooks, uh, uh, a consumer uh, commercial subscription to TechSoup, you're moving in between vendor products, reach out to us. Um, we have the experience. We've seen these product move migrations happen before. We can help you plan for them um, to the degree of at least mapping them. We don't implement them. We have managed service providing partners that do, but we want to get you uh, through that next step and onto the actual process of implementing it in your organization. Great. Thank you, Kevin, so much. And um we are reaching the end of our session here. It's it's 1052 here on the West Coast. And I really appreciate everybody's um, time and attention today. Um, and again, sort of, as I said at the front end of this, TechSoup does a lot of different things. Um, but I wanna just circle back to like, what is at the core of all of it for us? Um, you know, like, like you, we, we have our social mission in mind at the center of all of this, which is that, um, we believe tech can be a powerful tool. Um, we believe it can make a real difference for nonprofits and NGOs who are working around the world to build a more equitable planet. Um, and our role, as we see it, is to help you as you work with technology to understand how it can perform at a higher level in your organization, how your organization itself can perform at a higher level by using technology, and at the end of the day, how all of that combines to achieve the positive social mission that you already are working on within your community, wherever that is. So thank you for your time and attention today. I hope TechSoup can be helpful to you moving forward. Um, and uh, as I said, you'll get a follow-up email after this presentation with, with the slide deck in it, with some links that you can follow to help you find the things that you need to find. Um, and uh, if you have additional questions in the chat that haven't been answered already, I, I think you'll find that um, between Aretha and Kelly and Kevin, uh, some will probably reach out um, and uh, try to get you the answers that you're looking for. Um, so with that, um, again, my name is Nick Finn, and thank you very much for spending this last hour with us at TechSoup. We really appreciate the chance to help you, um, and, and thank you for the work you're doing out in your communities to help build a more positive world out there. Have a great day. Bye-bye.